Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Kasper Kovitz. I'm uh, teaching painting and drawing at Scripps. Um, and um, we're uh, today like uh, doing studio visits with our seniors um, who already uh, did their thesis, but now are in the expanded thesis project. Uh, and we're hoping, um, we're working very hard on uh, showing their work in a, a in a show that an a pandemic uh, appropriate show in Chinatown in the in the art district in LA uh, of Chinatown, uh, wherein the works will be displayed on monitors in businesses, mostly galleries, uh, and you can walk around and you will see like the work uh, for one week. They are hopefully starting uh, May eighth. Um, so we're very excited about that. It's a new approach, and we've. Uh, taken the, this approach from uh, um, a, a couple of curators uh, who organized uh, a series of shows like our, uh, that are called Women in Windows. Uh, and they are helping us with this approach um, with contacting businesses and like what to look for and what kind of insurance we need and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, so everybody's really hard at work. Uh, currently, of course, uh, both uh, building like the websites, writing statements, and of course, making that work. Um, their work like in, in fall was connected to the thesis, as you know, of course. Uh, uh, and now like it is expanding on that work that happened in fall and sometimes like going well beyond it. Um, so we're like now the thesis part is behind us. Uh, uh, we're really concentrating on each individual's voices. And I think there's some exciting projects in the making. So um, with that, I'm gonna turn over to Sam, uh, who's gonna be our first uh, presenter. And um, yeah, uh, afterwards we'll have time for questions. Well, hello everybody. My name is Sam and I'm just going to quickly share screen and then try to get this set up. Oops. Alrighty. So as I just said, my name is Sam and I am a senior. I am a digital art major with an emphasis in computer science. So as you'll see my projects, both of them, both for fall and spring, um, have a lot to do with speculative design and a little bit of computer science. So without further ado, so I'll just give you a quick um, run around of my artistic interest and background. And I wasn't entirely sure what format would be most appropriate, but um, I hope this ties it all together. So I'm interested in digital art um, and my favorite genre in any sort of media science fiction. So I knew that that was something I wanted to focus on when working on my thesis, both for fall and spring. I'm also very passionate about world building. That really started with Minecraft and Lord of the Rings. Um, I like sandbox games and I wanted to do something similar where I create my own world from scratch in some way. Um, and then I was introduced to speculative design by Ali Ogasian, who is my mentor for this round of thesis, um, which I'll talk more about in a bit. And then I knew that at some point I wanted to engage digital collage because I'm very passionate about digital art and combining elements of archive data with futuristic messages, um, AKA utopia and dystopia. And that will make more sense in a little bit, but that's kind of my background. Um, I've been a digital artist for a while. I'm a digital art TA at Scripps. Uh, I'm also an IT. Um, so I have a lot of experience with computers and software such as Adobe um, or 3D modeling softwares like SketchUp um, or Figma, anything that has to do with mockups. Alrighty, so I'll just give you a quick rundown of the fall. So my main project was, or ended up being, the creation of a futuristic city called Novizimus. So if anyone is familiar with Latin, you can already understand that that is very much inspired by the Roman Empire. Um, and that'll make more sense in a little bit. But I knew I wanted to create a city from scratch using some sort of 3D modeling software. And I eventually landed on SketchUp. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's a program that a lot of architects use to make mock-ups for buildings that they want to create. Um, and I decided to use the program to make it my deliverable, which is already interesting in itself. So it's a lot of wireframing and stuff like that. Um, so these are just some images of the site. And maybe after I'm done with this presentation, I will actually navigate to the site so you can see more images of the city. But these are just some shots that I picked um, 
of the city that I made from scratch. And I made a lot of components um, like drones and stuff like that. And basically the message was um, that cycles of um, economic familiarity that we're very accustomed to like capitalism, um, we won't be able to escape that in utopia or dystopia. So that will determine our future. Um, and I wanted to create a world that was reminiscent of a cycle of power and greed that we can't seem to get out of. Um, and that's why I was very interested in focusing on the Roman Empire, because I felt that that was a really good um, example of a great empire that fell short because it spread itself too thin and focused on the exploitation of resources and peoples. And I wanted that to translate over into my modern project. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit, um, and I'm happy to answer questions because it is a bit of a broad situation. So if I didn't explain that well, I completely understand and I'd be happy to answer any questions after. So for this time around, like I said, my mentor, Ali, she introduced me to speculative design, which is a field that I'm very, very passionate about now after I learned about it quite recently. Um, it's essentially a um, facet of design that focuses on what the future could look like and what buildings could look like, what human mobility could look like. Um, and I'm particularly interested in architecture groups or design groups um, like Archigram or Super Studio. Um, Archigram is an avant-garde architectural group and it was formed in the 1960s, so it has been around for a while. Um, they focus on Nietzsche heuristic and anti-heroic and pro-consumerist um, ideologies when creating these futures. And these images on the slide are just some examples of their work. Um, the reason I was really drawn to it was because it was a 2D way to make what I had made in the first semester, um, except in a different way. So I knew I wanted to create images that um, were similar to the world that I had created last semester but were some combination of vintage advertisements and then futuristic components. So I essentially wanted to use speculative design to create a future with vintage clippings um, that are a critique of capitalism and consumerist culture. And then that just brings me to my rough drafts or my working projects. And I have a lot more in the early stages, um, but they're still in um, the format of Photoshop. So that's gonna be hard to show today. And um, when I go to my site, you'll be able to see one of these up close, but um, these are some images that I've created, Earthstead and Sci Baby, and they are essentially collages um, using vintage advertisements um, of a world on the moon um, in the future that is still very much embedded in capitalism and consumerism. And I'll show you that up close um, in a bit. So the objectives or so what? Essentially, the overall thought is I wanna use articles of the past to create images of the future. Um, I wanna critique capitalism and the commodification of culture. Um, and I also wanna reveal how utopia is deeply connected with familiar economical systems, um, such as instant gratification that only capitalism can seemingly deliver at the moment and how that is flawed and unfortunate. But um, that's the overall idea. And then we will get to questions in a second, but I wanted to show you those up close. So first I'll just show you what I did last semester. This is my site for Novismus. Um, and then let's check out the city. These are some images that I, um, I created all these components from scratch. It was quite time consuming, but it was a really rewarding experience because it really let me um, it allowed me to get more familiar with 3D modeling, which is something I'm, going to be a software developer. I got a job at a biotech company after I graduate, and I'm going to be doing similar projects for them. Um, so I'm very glad that I went in that direction for my thesis. And then also, this was another component of the project, Terrible Idols, which has to do with machine learning. And I essentially wanted to make the deities or the gods that the people in this supposed dystopia would worship, which would be morphed combinations of the 0.01% and Roman head bus. Um, and I'm, I'd be happy to unpack that if anyone has any questions about that. But essentially, um, I used machine learning to teach an AI um, how to recognize photos of very, very wealthy people and then merge them with Roman head bus. Um, so I know they look a little freaky, but I really like the way they turned out. So I, I guess I can't really claim this as my own work. I have to give some credit to the AI. So just giving credit where credit is due. But these are, this is one of my favorite ones. It's just beyond recognizable. Um, 
but that was that. And then I will quickly go over to just my portfolio site. Uh, let's get in here. And then this is one of the ones up close, just um, so you can get an idea. I made this on Photoshop. Um, I also made some components in Illustrator. Um, I made a glass effect to make the domes. And then I used clippets of archived um, advertisements to make the people. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm up to. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen to us today. And I guess that's what I got for you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Uh, so uh, maybe we'll follow it up with uh, Q and A. Wow, so interesting. I am kind of I'm kind of a luddite, but I have an appreciation for um, the digital stuff that you're doing because of friends of mine. But that looks like such a fascinating way to spend time with a whole bunch of concepts and visual stuff too. Thank you, Samantha. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely interesting and a lot of different things to tackle, but it's very relevant given the fact we're quite literally living in the digital age and infotech utopias and stuff like that. So thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I think this year with the whole uh, pandemic thing, we got a huge giant boost into that. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of us, some of us are going to be dragging behind, but <laughs> yeah. Very true. <laughs> I have some idea of how much, how time consuming that kind of work is. And my, my son does programming for virtual reality and his girlfriend does a job that she does architectural modeling. And so I'm, that, that's a tremendous amount of work that goes into, into those models. Are they, are they all two dimensional, the ones that we were showing? Um, yes, yeah, so the actual model for the first thesis for Novizimus, that was completely 3D um, and I modeled it with 3D software, but the images, the deliverable ended up being 2D format. Um, and then this time around the deliverables start 2D and they end 2D. Um, so I'm really working in the 2D realm this time around. But yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Were you influenced by Scripps's architectural uh... <laughs> I, I don't know the the red the red buildings on top and the white. I thought, oh, this sort of came right out of scripts. I just wondered. If... That's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, Roman architecture, I suppose, can be considered Mediterranean, and scripts is pretty Mediterranean. So, I suppose by that logic, yes, I guess it is inspired by scripts. So yes, <laughs> I just wondered. Yeah, lots <laughs> of would have been all around you. Yeah. <laughs> True. Great, thank you. Um, thank you. And we can leave some more room at the end, like if there uh, are additional questions, maybe like um, some digestion happens. This is all a lot of information. Um, so, uh, Juliana, would you be uh, ready and uh, willing to go next? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Um, sorry, I have like two screens, so my mouse is kind of hidden, but. I think I've got it under control. It's all good, all good. Okay, let me get into presentation mode. Also, hi, <laughs> my name is Juliana. Um, I'm a senior at CMC and art is my dual but preferred major. Um, so let me see if I can share this really quickly. Well, if you're doing that, a little side note. Do you know that Chris Darrow was the first CMC art major? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> He's a became a musician. He died recently. Okay, you guys can see this, right? Perfect. Okay, so um, for this presentation, I wanted to uh, this this is not the official name of my project, but I thought it would be a good way to describe how it developed. Um, so the world versus a pinpoint, and then my name. Uh, I'll get into that. But first, I want to give you guys a little background about me as an artist. Um, I've been basically self-taught, just drawing and doing everything I possibly could as a kid. Um, and then when I decided to add my dual major in my junior year, which arguably is a pretty late time to add a major, but I really wanted to solidify and grow my technical processes. Um, so these are some of the works that I've been able to accomplish at Scripps. Um, and I think looking back, 
now I, I don't know if I would have ever seen myself like being able to accomplish so, so many different types of media. Um, so on the left, you can see this is um, a print that I made in Professor Nancy Mako's class. Um, but the technique really utilized like my drawing background um, because I drew that ink plate basically. Um, this one is also a print, but I just collaged some doodles that I had um, that I printed out. So it, it really utilized like a lot of just like things that I had done in the past. And then I was also in a photography class um, where I like mainly for me, I focused on composition and that has really helped me um, with my projects this semester, um, which I'll also get into. And then on the right is a digitally altered version of a watercolor that I did. Um, but obviously it looks much different from the watercolor because I just stretched it out in Photoshop. But I just wanted to show you guys kind of everything that I've been able to do, just a small snippet of, honestly, I've, I'm pretty proud of how far I've come um, and been able to, you know, practice so many different types of media, including photography, which I honestly never really had an interest in, but now it's kind of central to how I uh, complete most of my work. Um, so for the first, for my first semester, which was last year, um, I was kind of looking at it as like, you know, the big and scary senior thesis. Um, so I was kind of focusing um, mostly on telling a story and portraying, you know, very rich emotions. Uh, I had done a lot of personal growth over the summer and experienced a lot. So looking back, um, that's what came out in my planning processes. Um, so these are the sketches for about two thirds of the pieces that I completed um, for last semester. Uh, basically, I just wanted to show you guys how repeating like some of the themes are. So faces, um, these kind of lines kind of show up in a lot of the images. And then to me, it was just, it, it, it just pretty much shows like me as a person and my emotional development. Um, so that's what this project mainly focused on in my opinion. Um, and these are two of the completed pieces from last semester. Um, so I worked, I did, I had four in Betty, an acrylic. Stop, Betty, okay. stop. <laughs> and two um, in watercolor. So this one, I'm, I know it's a pretty low quality picture, but this is a watercolor piece um, and this is an acrylic. So I can see a lot of personal expression, discord, um, pain in these. Um, at the time it wasn't so evident, but now I can really see how this project honestly was like a large scale journal for me. Um, and I really poured myself into the motion of it. Um, and also it was definitely a release. Um, and now I can look back and see like just my growth. So that was the, the like spiritual aspects of personal growth were mainly what I focused on last semester. So I would probably encapsulate that as like the world because I feel like the first half of this project was me attempting to fit like the entire world into one single project and one narrative. Um, so it was a good starting point, um, but as an artist, I think I was ready to develop my craft into something a little bit more nuanced um, and not as like, I guess, in your face. So next up is, I guess, the pinpoint, which is what I referred to in the title. Um, so I really wanted to hone in on my technique and specifically formatted the entire second half of this project around detail. Um, so the pinpoint represents just one thing that I wanted to focus on this time around, giving myself a little bit more room for interpretation and also for the viewers to have a little bit more freedom to interpret what's going on. Um, yeah, and then I have definitely been incorporating a lot more digital uh, practices into this half of the project. Um, so that also has contributed to the amount of detail in this work. So the additional inspiration for this project was I was taking a walk, um, a daily walk, you know, in COVID our routines have become a lot more redundant. So I was kind of trying to parse out the beauty of my daily walk. And yeah, I honestly mostly took the same route every time. So <laughs> um, one day I came across this fire hydrant and I was, I think, you know, the sun was still pretty much out and I just thought it was really beautiful lighting. Um, all of my classmates and Professor Kovitz have heard this story like eight times already, but I was just like really in love with how the fire hydrant looked. Um, so I went back on Procreate, inserted the picture and then basically just started selecting colors and painting over it, which is what you can see on the right. Um, so that's just a snippet of obviously the whole fire hydrant will be painted, 
um, but I just fell in love with how the digital rendering of it looked. Um, it looks so realistic and the process of digital painting is just so much different from acrylic painting, which is what I focused on last semester. Um, so in addition to this one, I'm hoping to, I, I already took, found a picture of another fire hydrant and that I'm hoping to render in acrylic. So in the um, analog, you know, style of painting and the whole, the another like main topic in this project is comparing the digital process to the analog process and focusing in detail. Um, so all of the subjects in this semester's project will have a digital counterpart and an analog counterpart. So one of the studies that I'm also focusing on is portraits. Um, so on the left, you can see a self-portrait, which I was able to do in Professor Kovitz's drawing class, um, where I learned a lot about obviously shading and proportions and detail and sticking and being really precise with your technique. Um, and on the right, I was utilizing a similar technique, but on Procreate. And as you can see, it's a really different look, but I like both of them a lot. Um, I think the technical analog drawing has given me a lot of foundation for how to approach it and Procreate. Um, so yeah, I thought portraits would be a really good uh, focus for accuracy and detail. Um, so in addition to the fire hydrants and portraits, I'm also doing um, still lifes and more abstract work. That um, The abstract work is a little bit similar to last semester, which you guys will also be seeing. So in terms of presentation, um, I've been working on an animation in Procreate. So hopefully this works. I'm going to play you guys a little snippet that I have. So as you can see, the lines are being filled in. Um, and once this is done, hopefully this is what I will be able to present in our downtown show. I really love how it looks. Um, and there's a lot more detail in this piece, but this is just a little bit of what I've been working on so far. So yeah, I think once it's done, it'll be really good. So yeah, that was just a snippet. Um, let's see. And then here are a few of the other pieces that I will be finishing for the semester. So this one is, it's not, um, I think PowerPoint just cropped it into a square, but it's just a rectangular paint, painting. This is similar to my work last semester, but this is the abstract realism like study that I'm working on. This is another still life that I'm hoping to recreate in acrylic painting. And if I don't have the time to finish that, I'll probably just do it in Procreate as well. Um, and then I've already started on this profile as an acrylic painting and it's going really well. Um, I was trying to take pictures of it, but I just couldn't get the right lighting. I'm in the process of investing in some lighting. Um, so yeah, um, and then this one on the right um, is another, is the second piece in the um, abstract one. So yeah, I'm looking forward to completing all of these, of course. And yeah, that concludes my presentation. So thank you guys so much again for sharing your time with us. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Juliana. Yeah, of course. I don't have a question, but I just want you to know that I'm really drawn to the fire hydrant. <laughs> I just That's love so good it. to hear. <laughs> I yeah. had that same feeling too. It was just like you said, you were in love with the fire hydrant, you know, yeah. and I thought, yes, I have a, I have feelings for that. As well. <laughs> you know, I wanted to ask a question. Are you done, Jane? Am I interrupting? Yes. You? Yes. I wanted to know how in this time of um, um, COVID isolation classes, how do you, and being an art student, how do you, how do you do your time? How do you figure out your your work life, art life? How does that work mm -hmm. out there? Yeah, um, well, I luckily, since I added the major kind of late, I was already kind of mostly finished with my other one. So this last year, I've had the like great privilege to be able to focus on my art um, major. So honestly, um, I just do my classes. I work also part-time throughout the day, but that's just like a normal, like you know, morning to evening schedule. 
Um, and then luckily I don't really have too many commitments in terms of other academia. So I'll spend like maybe an hour to an hour and a half completing whatever assignment. And then the rest of the night, I just focus on this project um, and furthering my art basically. So yeah, I'll just, I'll be, I'll be done around, you know, 7.38 and then just have the whole rest of the night to, you know, be painting or be on my iPad. Um, so yeah, it's honestly been pretty easy for me to figure out my scheduling. Um, I would say that digital classes make it a lot easier for you to, or for me, um, to like schedule in, you know, work periods or rest periods because um, you're not like running from place to place. Mm -hmm. It obviously has its cons, but I've been able to work around it really well. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I have a Copernica of questions to ask you. Okay. So um, the first one I'd like to ask is what's your other major? Uh, it's called science management. Um, so it's okay. like econ plus STEM and I'm focusing on public health. Okay. Do you, has it had any impact upon your artwork? Do you? Well, I, I think you'll probably say yes, but I'm wondering how do you think it had impact upon your art? Um, yeah, that's kind of a difficult question, honestly, because, well, I feel like every, every year I've taken classes that kind of shed light on issues in a really, like, deeper understanding. So since I'm focusing in public health, I've been able to take a lot of psychology courses. Um, and you might think that, like, economics courses wouldn't have a lot of relationships, but they actually do. Um, I've just learned a lot about how systems are created and how inequity is um, just perpetuated through like economics and stuff like that. So even though those themes and images aren't like in the forefront of my work, I feel like I definitely keep that in mind when I'm creating. Um, I would love to like have a series that actually addresses some of the other things that I'm passionate about in terms of economics and public health. Um, but I would say maybe subconsciously and just like being able to develop as a person with greater knowledge. Has yeah. it. The, the second question is, is did you take a picture of that fire hydrant or did oh, you yes. just do it all from your head? No, no, no. Uh, actually what you saw there, um, let's see, what you saw in the um, image was actually the picture that I took. Uh, photograph. Yeah. I guess that's what they call them now. <clears throat> um, well, this, okay. This is actually a photograph. Um, and this is the, the painting that's going over it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I can't see it, but. Um, and then uh, I wanted, you know, you had, the, you had the one that you had the table and you had that you're gonna try to get ready for the um, exhibition down in Chinatown. And you had, you know, and you had the, you know, the work that was going on in it but everything was kind of tipped. Why did you tip it? Oh, like, like. It was, it was kind of like a Cezanne. It was kind of unnerving. <laughs> um, yeah, I, that was um, also the reference picture. That's how it was taken. Um, okay. And one of, one of um, the faculty mentioned how like those everyday things that you look at, um, like that's on a dresser. Like usually you don't really take them into mind, but now since COVID, we look at the same things probably more and more every day. You spend so much time in, you know, your house or your room, like maybe shifting the angle a little bit, calling attention to, you know, just the outline of things I feel like has significance as well. Okay, okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for your questions. Thank you very much, Juliana. And uh, Blake, are you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready. Um, Thank you, Blake. Hello, everyone. My name is Blake. Um, I'm a senior at CMC studying philosophy and art um, by way of Scripps College. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Awesome. Alrighty, so um, I've been an artist for as long as I can remember but it was only sophomore year that I permitted myself to believe I could do this seriously and like tell people I wanna work as an artist and try to make a career out of this. Um, so since maybe 2018, I've just been collecting a portfolio of like two dimensional paintings of that, like what you see right here. 
And then um, as I became a senior last semester, senior thesis rolled around, I was contemplating what I wanted to make my project about. And this was in 2020, where we witnessed so much social injustice with respect to racism and police brutality and human rights at large. So I felt the need to try to contribute something to society that was speaking to this overarching collective trauma we've all experienced. And so I came across this critical race theory called Afro-pessimism, which takes um, a microscopic lens at the history of the United States with respect to child slavery. And it basically analyzes the present day with respect to the past um, systems of inequity in the present day that tie all the way back to slavery. Examples being like um, contemporary insurance companies still having policies that um, were made during slavery to ensure um, property, which were people at the time. So with that project, I created my, the first portion of my thesis, which was Painting While Black, Exploring Racial Identity Through Iconography. And so I just wanted to like make more 2D works and more paintings that explore racial identity within this contemporary world and just meditate and contemplate over like difficult questions and nuances and complex feeling. And this project took a lot out of me. Like I only produced three final works to publish, but it was, it was a lot to work through. And so from that experience being so much, so like much to carry with myself, I thought for spring semester, how can I still um, explore these internal questions and like challenge myself, but also be easier on myself with the work I explore that I will have to do like I am now and talk to other people about. So I came across um, Afrofuturism, which is kind of like a component school of thought to Afrofuturism or Afropessimism, sorry. Um, Afrofuturism is a more aesthetic driven dialogue, which is concerned with what the future would look like for people within the African diaspora if we were aided by technology, what this utopian future would look like for Black people, particularly African Americans. And from that idea, I was just thinking about um, what my Afro future would look like, what my utopia would feel like, sound like, interact like, well, how well would um, people behave and dress like? And from there, of course, I wanted to have a queer intervention to have room for people like me who are both black and queer. Um, and from there, I created this project, which is gonna be a short film that meditates on this future, this utopia where black and queer people and people at large are safe and cared for and are flourishing. So all that to say, let me just play a quick clip for you guys to see. And then I recently came up with the second um, asset to show you guys as well. Listen, yeah. I need a vacation, and you know how the earthlings are. Right. Girl, let's sing. Leave glory. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah. Send you an audio and visual transmission once I land, and you should just link up. And... All right, I'll see you soon. All right, good glory. The audacity of me to wear my flaws. Adorned with moles, brashly flaunting to onlookers who deny their own. Forget explaining to those who refuse to understand. Forget tilling seeds of self-doubt as they grow into sequoias of shame. I declare with the sun ablaze my skin. I am that which is within from beginning to end with ample space between now and then. I grant myself the permission to love who I am, the permission to trust myself again and again and again. Ooh, la, 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 
Pops order with the cool French dude named Ed Swan. Wanna taste the pastry chocolate croissants. Okay. So as you can see, this is going to be like a desktop cinema project where um, scenes are housed within the desktop world. Um, so I have a long ways to go in editing and making things seamless, but that's where I am for right now. Thank you, Blake. Uh, so um, desktop cinema is like a, is a new format that like has arisen like now that uh, with new technology and um, also like inspired in some parts with like Zoom and like how we all interact with technology. And usually what it is, is, is as if you were looking at the camera and somebody was like going basically through a book. Uh, instead, you're like uh, and, uh, looking at a desktop and people are like opening windows. And uh, uh, so, so that's, it's, a, it's a very um, contemporary uh, format, uh, but very, very, very interesting work is being made in that. Uh, regard. So just in case you weren't familiar with that term. Uh, but now I'll open for questions. I like you're too intimidated to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> I may not be the only one, <laughs> but but you've really drawn me into your work, and it makes me want to see more. Well, awesome! That's that's great. I love. Thank you for providing that feedback. That's great to hear. Well, um, I actually like some of your your just your still drawings like the people or the couple walking on the beach and the black background with the uh I think horses was on one side and I, I didn't you went by so fast I didn't quite catch the one on the other side but I I was really drawn to those those are really nice thank you thank you so much I appreciate that I come from a more traditional photojournalism background. So it's, it's, it's interesting to see it moves really fast and jumping around, it's, it's kind of chaotic compared to what I think I'm more used to. Um, so that, this, it's interesting to, to see and to try to adapt to. Right. Yeah, um, I wanted to do something that was kind of irreverent to like traditions and standards. That's one of the spirits that's like motivating this whole project. Um, being brashly yourself and wearing your flaws. Um, even if there's a pop-up in the scene, just going along with it and making sure the art itself shines through. Yeah, I think uh, maybe it's uh, also helpful to know that like uh, we are encouraging um, to think about process and to like, rather than think about like producing, like uh, only thinking about producing a, a finished product or, or something like that, to really like dive into the process, into the practice of developing work uh, and exploring where it goes and rather like uh, 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 thinking about that and like, and, and understanding that that's a lifelong kind of uh, pursuit. Um, uh, I think other than that, like, I think it's very important to show that practice and process uh, is such an essential part uh, so that that this part gets more attention in each person's work, in everybody's work, each artist's work. Uh, as well, there's, of course, like uh, an increasingly uh, uh, a focus within uh, contemporary art uh, that accepts like process and, and ephemerality and, and things like that um, as, as part of uh, an artistic um, uh, utterance. And uh, the other thing is that I think it also reflects um, uh, in many ways like the, the aesthetics that we are confronted with. Uh, so uh, in, in, in picking up on this uh, um, uh, bombardment of information that we're getting and the short-term kind of introduction to new things uh, and before you know it they're already gone and deal to something else. I think that's very much part of uh, uh, Blake's work but also uh, Samantha's and, and, and Juliana's. Uh, uh, they're all very much like uh, of course uh, reacting to like 
a, a very uh, cur a, a current and very prevalent aesthetics uh, that we are confronted with. Yeah, it, it was really fun to see your work. I really was, yeah, it was really fun. It's just looking, looking, trying to see, trying to get it all in. So about the, um, the live show in Chinatown, how will that work? With my art, um, since I'm time-based, I imagine I can just send something that can play on screen. Um, since I've been told about that idea, I plan to shoot some things specifically for the formatting of the venue. I just need to see it. I don't have, need to, but I would like to see it in a reel before I send over the final deliverable. But I'm, I'm confident and excited about the Chinatown venue. And thank you for your comment, Beth. Well, you know, it's interesting because I notice, I mean, I'm old now, I'm 70, right? So the, the mu so many things that were easily accessible when I was younger because they were just in my world. Now I live with my mother and, she, and you know, it's like, where do you, how do you get plugged into new music? And I'm not with my grandkids and, you know, there's sort of, it's really fun to get to get to have something else come into your world that's not what you turn on your old folk music, right? From 1974. Right, right. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think uh, um, uh, the notion of control, of course, is also like uh, uh, quite important here, like that uh, in, in it, it might make us feel much more comfortable if we were able to control all the information and the information flow, but like, um, but uh, art can also be a reflection, of course, of the uncontrollability uh, of that information flow. And uh, because of the pandemic, we're forced to uh, go to like, we're, we're trying this, um, uh, it's both uh, in-person show, but also like a remote show. So like uh, you will experience the work uh, basically on monitors uh, that are streaming this, but uh, all, all the time. And, uh, but the monitors are like in, in certain places and you can walk from place to place just as you would in a real um, uh, exhibition, for example. And uh, so, yeah, the, the work has to be uh, screen ready, ultimately, mm -hmm. even if it starts analog or is analog. Somehow, like everybody has to figure out like, well, how can I present uh, in this situation with this audience, with this, this technology? Uh, those limitations and um, yeah I think it's going very well so far so um, and I have um, Natalie who uh, unfortunately had a time conflict uh, she might join us um, uh, still but uh, she sent me a video and I could share that right now uh, if you like unless there are more questions for Blake then I will go ahead and share it Can everybody see it? Is there supposed to be audio? I think you muted, Professor. I'm so sorry. Uh, I will try again. Hi, I'm Natalie Bauer, and this is what I've done for my thesis. So my thesis comes in three parts. Uh, Britain and the Bear, Portfolio Work, and the Women in Windows Exhibition. So the first part is Britain and the Bear, which is a 20-page original children's book I wrote and illustrated last semester. Uh, here you can see some of the storyboards that I made while working on it. Uh, the story follows Britta, a young Swedish girl who um, fears the forest and the bear that lives in it. Um, but one day she actually encounters the bear and it turns out the bear was following her because he wanted to eat the lingonberries she'd been picking. And it's supposed to be all about um, the unknown and fear and otherness. Um, and so here are the first few pages of it. Um, you can see the plot beginning to develop as Britta begins to fear the bear. And if you're interested, you can see the whole thing online on our website, and I will post the link in the chat. 
Um, the second project I've worked on, which is the one I've been focusing on this semester, is improving my portfolio. I want to go to grad school for visual development for animated films, so this is really important practice for me. So I've been experimenting with a lot of things, um, you, as you can see here. Um, these are some of the characters and settings I've designed over the last few months. I couldn't fit everything on one page, but I um, tried. <laughs> And um, we recently had a walkthrough with a feedback session, and it turns out that people responded most to my process videos and photo backgrounds. Um, my process videos show line for line how my drawings appear, um, but I couldn't get it to play on the PDF, obviously. Um, and so for the Women in Windows exhibit, I want to combine these two aspects. And I want to create a uh, page of self, a self-drawing comic book laid out kind of like this, where each panel will start drawing at a different time and they'll be on a loop. And then I will incorporate photo backgrounds and potentially some uh, small animations like blinking or a smile from one of the characters. And I'll try to build an ambiance or maybe a short story or something like that um, through that system. Um, thank you so much for listening to me. Do you have any questions? All right, well, uh, I'm gonna try to answer any questions that you have as much as I can. And uh, maybe uh, Blake, Juliana, Sam, if you can help me out, if you know an answer. Okay, does she have sound music, anything to go along with it? Okay. I, I think currently, no, that's not planned. Uh, okay. That's a very good point, and I, I will definitely relate to her. I think that's something she should think about. Thank you for that question. Are there any questions about like uh, what she's working? So, like about the presentation that she gave. Uh, so she she did work on like she basically completed a, um, a children's book, uh, the Sprit and the Bear. Uh, book and then uh, went uh, on from there uh, because of her uh, 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 interest in, in becoming a character designer or like going into this uh, kind of world of illustration. Uh, we suggested to like uh, build out the portfolio beyond like just uh, uh, one story, but to show like a range of characters uh, and a, a range maybe of style as well. Uh, and um, and that led to like uh, her exper uh, experimenting with different kind of characters and uh, different ap approaches. Uh, uh, and what we saw was like uh, she she uh, shared like a, an interesting idea. I think uh, of of um, uh, a young woman going to like uh, I believe high school or something and um, experiencing a disconnect between the way she saw herself and the world. Uh, to the realities that uh, that she encounters at high school, and uh, because she she is uh, um, increasing a great facility in creating characters, uh, but the background is still something to be developed. Uh, we suggested to let combine uh, this character with a realistic background, like a photo uh, uh, background, uh, that then can uh, juxtapose and clash with the imagined uh, uh, view of like maybe this uh, main character and the actual reality uh, in the process. And so that's a box, that's, that's where we are. I, I do have a question is, do you think she would actually get <clears throat> the children's book published? Because I would think that would be um, a strong, would make, that part of your portfolio is stronger if you have an actual published piece. So publish. Uh, well, so uh, yes, she very much uh, would like to publish this children's book, and uh, and she would likely have to uh, self-publish uh, because uh, getting it uh, to a publisher like is is very time-consuming, uh, of course. And then uh, there's also a question like certain publishers want a certain number of uh, pages rather than another and. Uh, so, so this is a, a long-term process uh, to get it actually published, uh, published by a publisher. Uh, Self-publishing 
was something that uh, I recommended to like postpone for now because of the uh, um, cost and the uh, time expense uh, what she just entered and she can answer those questions uh, herself. Um, but in any case, uh, so like, uh, what, we, what we recommended was to like uh, continue like building out the portfolio rather than having uh, one finished product to uh, uh, show range. Uh, and that's, uh, hi Natalie, <clears throat> you just arrived for the Q&A uh, of your Q&A. So, uh, oh, my Q&A. Oh, perfect. <laughs> So if anybody would like to ask Natalie directly. Uh... I think we all already finished asking our questions. So. <laughs> it, it's really hard to, it's really hard to ask questions I find of, of artists doing their work, but it's so, it's so interesting how there's so many different kinds of things you've got going on from all the people, I love it. Now, like one question that came up and I think is a, is a great question is, uh, are you planning uh, to have any sound in relationship to like your, uh, the, uh, the videos of like the drawing process or the juxtapositions of like your uh, scenes with the characters? I was thinking about adding some just like really basic um, ukulele sound in the background because I play the ukulele and I could potentially compose something original so I wouldn't have to go and use someone else's work, but it would have to be really simple so it doesn't distract too much. I have, I have a question I want. Um, how many of you four are using, you know, what I call traditional um, traditional art methods, i.e. painting, sculpting, um, ceramics, or the like. Uh, you could just raise your hands. I know Juliana is, um, but what about the rest of you? <laughs> okay, well, well, just wondering, you know. I think uh, well, um, make uh, uh, paints as well and uh, did uh, extensive work on, uh, on uh, painting. And so I think like, uh, I, I think everybody is, uh, is uh, actually has taken classes and uh, uh, comes from an analog, from a, like a traditional background in some sense, but like uh, uh, for specific uh, uh, tasks that they are interested in, uh, the digital means are just superior in that sense. But uh, uh, as anybody who has worked uh, digitally will uh, will tell you, it is not in any way simpler, uh, and uh, and all the underlying issues that you have about uh, in in an analog media uh, still exist. Uh, if uh, like starting with uh, composition uh, to content to like uh, uh, you know thinking about your audience uh, to actually the the specific quality of your mark making. Uh, which uh, the, uh, is an increasingly uh, complex kind of like um, uh, uh, thing in digital media where like uh, different forms of creating mark making are more and more explored. Um, so uh, while it does seem maybe as, uh, as uh, simpler or, or uh, more yeah, easier accessible. It is actually quite time consuming and complicated. And um, there's no easy way around like, uh, uh, you know, like creating a, a, a solid piece of art is, is um, takes a lot of work, takes a lot of practice, takes a lot of thinking. And uh, so uh, uh, I think, I think, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. I, I don't I don't think they're easier. I don't think it's easier at all. <laughs> I was just wondering, you know, um, you know, if they did or not, you know, um, just more curiosity. I don't think it's easy at all. I've worked with computers for 40 years and they're, they're they, they can be really difficult to deal with. <laughs> I was curious about that too, because I've, I've worked just a little bit, tiny, tiny, tiny bit with procreate, which is a really, um, you know, great, I don't know, way of, of uh, 
I don't even know the, the language <laughs> way of doing things, but I, I found just coloring in colors. I thought, my God, I could do this a hell of a lot faster with a brush than trying <laughs> to remember, you know, which, which level I'm on, you know, is this the background, the foreground that, you know, I just got totally confused, but I'm not, I'm not computer oriented. So I get that. I got really, really frustrated and I thought, crap, I could do this whole picture just by painting it. So I'm curious, do you, do you guys, um, is that frustrating to you or is that something that you're just pushing through because that's something that you want to learn? I, I just, I'm just curious. Go ahead, Blake. <laughs> Um, I just wanted, when you said frustrating, a light popped in my head because as <laughs> Professor Covet said before, um, I'm transitioning from being a painter to this new digital media um, I'm working through. And yeah, frustration is like, it's that, but that's the reason why I'm doing it because that frustration, that challenge, I know will eventually pay off. But as we've um, all established, working these like video and digital formats and media are not um, anywhere close to easy. Okay, well, can I just say, don't give up on your traditional painting because I thought your paintings, your drawings were beautiful. I, 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 I don't know, I was more attracted to those. That, those were warmer to me or more, I don't know what, I don't know what the word would be. I mean, I totally like digital stuff. I think, you know, the processes are just, you know, really cool, but, but your drawings are really nice. So don't give that up. <laughs> Keep sketching you. while you're doing all of this stuff. Right, that's the plan to keep it all uh, up to speed. Yeah, I would like to add on to that. Um, I think frustrating, yes, um, but the payout for me has been like really big. Um, also, the things that I do learn on Procreate have helped me in my analog. Um, so especially with like color theory, I find like, in, for example, in the fire hydrant Procreate one, like if I'm doing like, you know, a color in a shaded area and then a color in a non, or, you know, a lighter area, it's usually just like going down the grayscale a little bit. And then I can just like basically apply that new knowledge to my analog um, skills as well. So I've found that they actually go a lot more hand in hand than I thought. Um, and, and also for me, like the Procreate, when it's finished, I find like just really great satisfaction in how clean they look. Um, and just like how precise it is. Um, so that's been like, you know, kind of the, the payoff at the end of all those, you know, time consuming like line drawing and stuff like that, so yeah. Well, your portraits are beautiful. I, I would assume those are analog and your those two portraits that you had, I, I really liked those. I thought those were great. I mean, I like the hydrant too, but the portrait spoke to me. Thank you. Uh, of those portraits, one was analog and the other one was uh, uh, digital. Uh -huh. I, I also see like that as, I mean, both in my own work, but like uh, also like that, it's a great, actually, uh, it's very beneficial for learning to like go back and forth. Uh, and uh, it also like highlights, so like uh, digital work uh, or digital means uh, are, are especially helpful if you have repetitive tasks like if you're like uh, re animating a character or like telling a story with the same character over and over again uh, that just speeds it up like uh, tremendously because you can now shift things and you're like not starting from scratch uh, every single time what it doesn't have and what still what is still like uh, of course something that that uh, needs to be thought about is the is the physicality of the object uh, and so even with uh, 3d printing a uh, 3d printing uh, looks like a 3d printing and so how do you get back to um, uh, the physically made object or, or or if not like how do you deal with the absence of that aura um, uh, is still there so um, so I think especially like balancing um, analog and digital work is extremely valuable and uh, really does start to inform each other uh, over time. And so I'm very happy that everybody's um, uh, is trying out as much as possible and, uh, uh, and not giving something up for something else, but rather staying like fluid in, in all of their approaches. 
Well, thank you very much for sharing what you're what you're doing. It's it's uh, we always all we usually have a bigger group when we come physically to the studio, but it's always it's just interesting to see kind of what's happening now in the studio you know, with the, with the students and how things are involved evolving and they should evolve. So thank you. Yeah. Uh I want to speak for everybody, like that, for the department. Thank you so much for your continued uh, uh, interest and uh, support for our uh, seniors. That's uh, it's really great. We really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed um, this virtual studio visit as much as you did your in-person ones. And hopefully soon we'll have in-person again. Yeah, and I'm delighted that we've recorded it. So it'll go up so that people who weren't able to come can see and I thought we touched on some really good things as well as being able to see some interesting work. And I, I just wanted to say also, I hate saying just, I'm trying to stop saying I just wanted to say, <laughs> but um, to see the social consciousness of the issues of the day is you guys all weave that beautifully into your work. Um, my dad was a painter and he very much kind of was didn't think people should be making statements you know he was into color and form and <laughs> but this but is I, one of his pictures behind us but i but i love it when it works together so beautifully that's all thanks i i also wanted to say to samantha um we were before you or no i'm sorry it was natalie forgive me samantha i'm sorry it was Natalie that you you have your uh, your children's book. And, do I have that right? Yes. Is it, okay. Um, I know it's expensive or whatever to do, but I, I I was just wondering: is there any way that you could, you know, online do some copies of your books so that when you do the show in Chinatown, you might actually have places where people could pick up your physical book and buy it? Just a thought. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we'll uh, let you know like when the show uh, uh, comes around. We'll, uh, and if you have any additional questions, please feel free to like uh, reach out to me. I will relay it. And um, thank you very much for your time. It was nice to meet you all. Yes. Nice thank, to you. thank you. Thank you. We get to meet in person sometime. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.